Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this, how to overcome the fear of not being saved. So make sure you pay attention because I know that God is going to speak to your life. Have you ever doubted? Have you ever been filled with fear? Maybe I'm not saved. Well, listen, that's happened to me many, many times as I was growing up in the Lord. And that happens to many, many people as they're growing up in the Lord. Why? Because the devil wastes no opportunity to try to attack your confidence and your boldness and your security of the love of God that he has towards you. When you lose your boldness, your confidence, your security in the love of God, then you're not able to take steps of faith forward. You're not able to stand up after falling. You're not able to believe God in your difficult times, and your difficult situations. If you can doubt the salvation that God has so freely given you, if you can doubt the love of God and the grace of God, if the devil can fill your mind up with that doubt against the love of the Lord, if the devil can make you fear and doubt maybe you're not saved, then your whole foundation is going to be wobbly. And that's what the devil's after. He's after your foundation in Christ. Because when you know and you understand, because we're not worthy of it, but when you know and you understand that it doesn't depend if we're worthy, God chose to save us. God chose to love us. Once you start understanding, man, God chose to love me, even though I'm filled with flaws, even though I'm filled with errors, even though I make mistakes every day, God still chose to love me, man. That fills you up with so much confidence. That fills you up with so much boldness. That fills you up with so much authority. Like you know God has your back. You know that God is with you no matter what. And you can stand up and you can repent and you can walk forward in boldness. And you can enter the presence of God with confidence. And you can worship him and praise him and you can pray. And you can ask him to help you and to surround you and to protect you and to lift you up and to forgive you. Man, when you understand how much God loves you, you're going to be able to overcome any attack attack any plan that the devil tries to raise up against you so now let's talk about this how to overcome the fear of not being saved the first thing that i want to speak to you about is this i'm going to be speaking about two things and the first thing that i want to speak to you about is christian fellowship now you might say christian fellowship that doesn't sound like it'd be the most important thing to overcome the fear of not being saved no but it is christian fellowship and let me give you an example let me give you an illustration from the bible John the Baptist, you've heard of him, John the Baptist, literally the cousin of Jesus. Elizabeth and Mary were related. Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist. Mary on earth is the mother of Jesus, right? So they're related. John the Baptist is the cousin of Jesus. John the Baptist was prophesied by an angel. An angel prophesied his birth. His father was a priest. His mother was a godly woman. John the Baptist grew up a godly man. And then when he was older, God called him to the wilderness to go and begin to preach and to go and begin to baptize people. And he was prophesied ever since the Old Testament. So when you think of the accolades of John the Baptist, he's a man of God. He was prophesied. His mother and his father were godly people. You think of John the Baptist and you say, man, a person like that, a person like that is never going to doubt their salvation. A person like that is never going to doubt Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. As a matter of fact, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, which which comes to take away the sin from the world. Listen, but one day, one day, and these days attack all of us, but one day John the Baptist was captured by Herod and he was sent to jail and he was going to be executed. Executed. That's what was going to happen to him. He was going to be executed. And right there when he was in the prison, the Bible tells us that he began to doubt the person of Jesus. He began to doubt is Jesus really the Savior? He began to doubt if Jesus was really the Savior. Why? Because of his circumstances. Because of his fear. Because of his anger. Because of his anxiety. Because he was no longer baptizing. Now he was in the dungeon in darkness. He began to doubt Jesus Christ. In the darkness many times, we will begin to doubt the light. And that's what was happening to John the Baptist. He was getting attacked, bombarded. Is Jesus really the Savior? Is Jesus really the one who we were waiting for? And he even sent some of his own disciples, men that he discipled, teaching them that Jesus was the Son of God. He even sent some of them to go and ask Jesus, Hey, John says, are you the one who we were waiting for or should we wait for another? Now, this is where Christian fellowship is so important. John was by himself in the dungeon. He was getting attacked with doubt. He was his own counselor. 
It's dangerous when we're our own counselor. See, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the great counselor. The Bible says that there's ways that unto a person look correct, but the end of those ways is death and destruction. When we're our own counselors, many times we can counsel ourselves what we want to hear. But when we let the Holy Spirit and the Word of God be our counselor, that's when we're going to have victory. Check this out. This is where Christian fellowship comes in. When he sent his disciples to go and ask Jesus, are you the one or should we wait for another? The Bible says that Jesus told the disciples of John, go and tell John what you have heard and go and tell John what you have seen. And then Jesus begins to preach to those disciples and he tells them that the gospel is being preached to the poor. And at the same time that he's preaching to them, Jesus begins to perform miracles on the sick and on the hurting and on the crippled that were there. He begins to perform miracles. He's preaching, performing miracles. And then he tells the disciples of John the Baptist, go and tell him everything you have seen and heard. Why? Because when John was by himself, when he was just listening to the attacks and the lies of the enemy, doubt was beginning to fermentate. Doubt was beginning to germinate in his life and it was beginning to consume him. But as soon as Jesus sent back a word, as soon as the word hit John back again, he was filled with strength. He was filled with encouragement. You see, when you're around like-minded believers, not carnal believers, because those, there's many carnal believers and they'll just end up making you feel worse. But when you get around like-minded believers that believe the Lord, that trust in the Lord, that know the word of God, this has helped me many times. When you get around like-minded believers in your times of doubt, in your times of fear, in your times of discouragement, they are going to be vessels. They are going to be tools that God is going to use because remember, the devil is using his lies, his tools to try to make you doubt and fear if you're really saved. But they are going to be tools of God and they're going to be able to speak to you and encourage you what God's word says and you're going to find yourself being encouraged, being strengthened once again. So that's why Christian fellowship is so important. That's why many times the devil wants to take away people from attending church or from having Christian fellowship because he knows if I can isolate these people, then I can have them all by themselves. Then I can have them all alone and I can begin to attack them and bombard them. But when you're around Christian believers, like-minded Christian believers, when you're around Christian fellowship, man, that's a strength. And that's an encouragement that's going to help you many, many times. Now, the second thing that I want to speak to you about how we can overcome the fear of not being saved is knowing what God's word says. Knowing what God's word says. See, the word of God is compared to a sword. The word of God is compared to a light. When there's a lot of vines or a lot of shrubs or when there's something stopping your path, a sword can clear the way. See, when doubt and discouragement is blinding you, the sword of God's word can begin to cut and clear away those vines and those shrubs, spiritually speaking, all that doubt and discouragement that's trying to fill you up, the Word of God can begin to cut those things down. But the Word of God is also compared to a light. See, if you're in darkness, the Word of God can give you light. The Word of God can begin to shine a light to your path, to your way, and the Word of God will give you direction. It will give you a path to follow. So it will clear your path, it will light up your path, if you're feeling darkness inside or darkness in your mind or you can't see because you're getting filled with doubt and discouragement, the word of God will give you light and the word of God will clear your path. So it's important to understand what the word of God says. Now, I've written down some verses here and I want to tell them to you. And if I was you, I would write these down. Now, there's many, 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 many other verses that will strengthen and encourage our salvation, that will strengthen and encourage our security and our salvation, our faith in God. But I just want to read these verses here. I have one, two, three, four of them. I have four verses that I want to read to you. And if I was you, I would write them down. When you quote these, when you know these, when you understand these, when you write these down on your screensaver, you type them in your notes and you put them as your screensaver. When you write these down and put a sticky note on your car, so right when you enter your car, you remember them. When you write these down and you put a sticky note on your mirror in your restroom first thing in the morning when you're brushing your teeth and right before you go to bed when you're brushing your teeth again, you see those scriptures. When you're constantly knowing and understanding and seeing the word of God is going to begin to strengthen you. It's going to give you victory over the lies and discouragement and doubt that the devil tries to bring over the fear of doubting your salvation. So look, look, look at the first one that I want to share with you. Romans chapter 10 verse 13, how you can overcome the fear of not being saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says this, for all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Did you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus? Did you trust in him? Did you believe in him? Did you make that confession of faith? The Bible says all those, not most of those, not many of those, not most likely, probably many of those, most of, no. The Bible says for all those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Write it down. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. All those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second one I share, want to share with you is John chapter 3, verse 16. We all know that one. But I also want to share to you verse 17. John 3, 16 and 17. Write this down. John 3, 16 and 17. John chapter 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his son, that whoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So when you believe in his son Jesus, you will not perish. You will have eternal life. But then verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Look at that. God didn't send Jesus to the world to condemn it, but to save it. God didn't send Jesus to condemn you, but to save you. All those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Check. God didn't send his son to condemn it, but to save the world. Check. Look at the third one I want to read you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 through 10. The Bible says this. While we were yet sinners, God showed his love for us like this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ gave his life for us on the cross. And then it says, if he gave his life for us while we were sinners and saved us while we were sinners, how much more won't he save us now that he's resurrected? Pay attention. Romans 5, 8 through 10. It says that when you were a sinner, God showed his love for us in this way. That while we were sinners, he saved us. Now the Bible says, now that we're saved, how much more won't he save us through his resurrection? If his crucifixion is, if his death saved us when we were sinners, how much more will not his resurrection save us now that we're children of God? So remember, man, if Jesus gave his life for me when I was in the worst version of myself, when I was a 100% sinner, didn't care nothing about him, and God sent his Holy Spirit to come and save me, how much more now isn't God going to save me? How much more now aren't I saved that I'm trusting in him and believing in him, and he resurrected on the third day. If his death gave me salvation, how much more won't his resurrection give me salvation? Now, I want you to write this one down also. Romans chapter 8, verse 33 through 39. The Bible says, who is the one who can bring a condemnation against those who God has elected? So when the devil tries to condemn you, the Bible is saying, who is the one in Romans 8, 33 to 39? It says, who is the one that can bring a condemnation against those who God has justified? When the devil tries to make you feel guilty, condemn, tries to make you doubt your salvation, tell him, no, there's no one who can bring a condemnation to the one that God has saved. And not only that, verse 34 all the way to 39 continues to say this, for nothing can separate us from the love of God. Repeat that after me. For nothing can separate us from the love of God not a need, not a worry. And then he goes deeper. He says, not height, not depth, not width, not a demon, not an angel. He says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. What is nothing? What is nothing? Nothing means nothing. He didn't say 99% of the things on earth might not be able to separate us from the things of God. No, he said, nothing can separate us from the love of God. You called upon the name of the Lord. He sent his son not to judge you, but to save you. The Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. If while we were yet sinners, his death saved us, how much more now won't his resurrection save us? That's the word of God. When you understand the word of God, that nothing can separate you from the love of the Lord. When you believe God's word and when you trust and have boldness and the authority and in the grace and in the love of God, when you understand God's not like me, God's not like me. The Bible says this, even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. You got to understand, God's not like me. I would have given up on myself a long time ago, but God's not like me. He's never going to give up on you. He's never going to abandon you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. If this video was a blessing to you, do me a favor. I post several videos a week just like this one, aimed to encourage you in faith. If you like this video, subscribe. I post several videos that I know will be a great blessing to your life. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel, for these videos, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are always a great blessing to my life. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos because I know that they're going to be a great blessing to your life. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.